All right, hello guys. Uh, this video is going to be about different types of rocket stoves, different designs, and uh, this is no uh, no way all of them. Uh, it's just a, it's some of them. Um, this is some that you've seen before, uh, some that I've added, and some that you've not seen before. Uh, a traditional rocket mass heater, I don't think anybody needs me to go over it. This represents a traditional, and that's when your uh, flue is exiting through your cob, traditional barrel. I would say a traditional rocket stoves a 6, 8, or 10 with a downdraft. Uh, anyway, horizontal, basically a horizontal bench or bed or area cob bench. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a variation. I'm going to be moving the camera a little bit so you guys can uh, get a better view of these details. So then, uh, this is a castle or a vertical mass rocket stove. And uh, what happens is, is uh, as the fire comes up the tube and rolls over and burns out, it will roll up in the top here, around, it'll come down, roll up in the top here, come down, and then go out. Now, I've seen them with two, three, and four of these vertical stacks, depending on uh, how hot your fire here is burning. Depends on how many you want to put up there in order to get your uh, temperature down to somewhere a little over 100 degrees so it'll draft good. Uh, these can be a little more, uh, especially if you don't have the uh, wall space for the bench. So a vertical mass can be accomplished. Uh, it can be a space saver. can be more advantageous for some people in their designs. Now I wanted to show something here that perhaps is not as that I wanted to show, and that is, is uh, this uh, this design here. You guys have seen my, uh, you've seen my, I hope you've seen my uh, rocket fireplace or the water siphon system that I set up. I built that on top of an old existing bench that was a horizontal bench. Uh, as a remodel in a garage, just proof of concept, showing some things. This is a water or water thermal mass. The way if I had that to do over again, not, I would set that the chimney behind the, the rocket stove itself and put an elevated uh, water tank in there and uh, use the thermal siphon off the top of the stove and that water tank would be behind or in the brick chimney which would be a good clean finish and uh, would hold considerably more than the uh, traditional or even the castle and it only require one castle vertical rise uh, in order to hold it uh, something that I wanted to add here today and I've said before that a uh, uh, a 55 gallon drum will hold, you know, 75,000 BTUs thereabouts. I wanted to give you a little bit better idea of what that is and uh, or, or how much heat water holds. And so I, well, here's, here's one I found today I figured up. It's 135 gallons, right? If you raise 135 gallons, 20 degrees, you store 22,000 BTUs. So, if you had a 250 gallon tank in here, you'd be storing pretty close to 50,000 BTUs. A 30 gallon, a 250 gallon tank somewhere 30 inches diameter, about six foot tall, somewhere close. So, uh, yeah, that would be a, a water thermal mass, and that's how I would use a thermal siphon, and that's how I would get a good clean finish and still store. 
and probably have some vents off some lower and higher areas to be able to pull the heat off of that. So I think all of you have seen uh, my Bulldog rocket stove and I thought that was worthy to put up here because it doesn't require a downdraft. The other thing it does is it gives you the bigger burn chamber. Giving you the bigger burn chamber allows you to heat something like 200 gallons of water because you need that amount of BTUs to go to the to the water, to the thermal mass, or to a, you know, it just takes or if you have a larger house, right? <clears throat> you just need that, uh, well, I, now, I'm not sure on mine if it's the brick here that's causing the better draft, uh, but I'll tell you that I have absolutely no backdraft smoke coming up right here. I have no black at the end of my stove right here, none whatsoever. No soot has made it past the end of that. <coughs> In weeks of burns now, I've not had any soot. I still challenge you guys to look at some of the nicest uh, rocket stoves out there, and you're going to see black right here in front of the burn chamber uh, on these six and eight inch downdraft rocket stoves. So the Bulldog is just a bigger burn chamber uh, with a brick brick riser. Uh, now there's one other thing that I wanted to point out here that could be, uh, could it, and I've seen set up, and that is, and that's the, uh, that's the passive uh, mass. And the passive uh, thermal mass would be where the smoke doesn't actually go up or into the thermal mass to heat it. The smoke's actually going up the uh, uh, a chimney here, but the thermal mass is open uh, to the barrel, so the smoke can come in here and roll around now in the heat. It will store as much heat as you know causing it, but it will not uh, cause any backdraft here, right? So you will get some thermal mass without causing any, without getting any backdraft there. And so it, you could use passive solar, or, I'm sorry, passive thermal mass in addition to uh, uh, water thermal mass too. Okay, I'm gonna back you out one more time here because I wanna show you a design that I've come up with. Okay. I had to do this all over again this is a 35 gallon drum. Once you put a layer of brick down and you lay your 35 gallon drum on your layer of brick, then all you need to do is build this shape around it up to the level of the top of your drum. Once you fill that in, or once you build this brick up to the top level of your drum, or slightly over it, then you put these walls here in, and then you cob this whole space up flat with the top of this drum so it would be filled in to this level. Once you have it filled into that level, you have a flat surface area, you go on top of your 35 gallon drum and you cut your hole here. And you can cut your hole as big as you want it. 35 gallon drum is, a, is 15 inches. It's about 15, it's almost 16. I'm gonna call it 15 and three quarters. So they're about 15 and three quarter inches. Now, one of the problems that using a barrel on all these other designs do is it limits how big you can make your stack, okay? What I'm going to tell you is if you lay down a 35-gallon drum and use that as your burn chamber, well, first of all, you're going to have a dang three-foot deep, 15, three-quarter, 16-inch wide hole there for a burn chamber, which is going to get a lot of wood. And secondly, I would tell you that cut your hole quite large. I would cut my hole... I would go 12 inches and uh, once you cut a hole 12 inches go ahead and put your brick up around it but your brick is not going to be able to uh, your barrel is not going to sit over your brick when you make a brick circle that big your barrel a 55 gallon drum won't sit over it so instead of going and trying to find you a, a barrel that's bigger or a bigger diameter barrel in order to go up these sizes right that's not necessary because once you get it to that stage then obviously what you would do is, is you would just continue going up the outside edge on up past the top of wherever your brick riser, whatever length you wanted it to be. And then this top level here would simply be a piece of plate steel, quarter inch, half inch, whatever you want. 
Now you can either roll that up and hide most of that plate steel to not give off much heat, or you could expose it. You could hide some of it and put a coil up here on it. You could also put your thermoelectrics up there on it. And so what you would wind up would be a pretty clean finish because it would wind up looking like this. So this here would be all your stone and stuff all over here. And you could just have a, you could actually have a mantle up here hiding that. And then there you'd have that metal cooking surface on top here, right? And this bigger area, bigger than the drum, right? This is more airspace around here. And this is obviously going to be more mass. This is going to store more heat and allow you a bigger chimney, a bigger stack here to get yourself going on something like that 15, 12, uh, 12 inch inner diameter stack and then 8 inch, you know, taking off of that out the back going up would get it done. And that's going to be one heck of a rock stove. And, uh, this is probably how I'm going to do mine because it's going to allow me much better surface area for my thermoelectrics uh, and some other things that I'm going to do. So I'm probably going to be building one with a 35 gallon drum laid down in this type of configuration. Now there's one more that I wanted to bring up that I thought was a good idea and I'm going to try to explain this and draw this as I explain it. Uh, so in a greenhouse, I've seen these guys in, in, in these pit greenhouses. And so these guys are, are going through there and they're, and they're uh, digging these greenhouses. So if this is the ground, they're digging these greenhouses. So you're coming through a door on the end of your greenhouse like this and you're walking through and then you're just being able to grow and they're calling them pit greenhouses. Well, that's just a beautiful idea, I think. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to grow those or do those pit greenhouses uh, in, the, in the earth. And so when you dig your door, you dig this trench deep, and your door, you're walking right down the center, and you've got elevated beds left and right, and you don't have to have as much plastic and all that to build your house, so it really cuts down on the, uh, on the cost of building the hoop house. It also, anything below the frost line is going to give you a little warmth. Uh, yeah, there's just several advantages of it. Uh, so in a pit house, so I want to give you guys a good idea. I don't know if there is a better idea than this. If, you, if you're trying to grow all season long, you're growing in the winter, you've got something if you want to heat, I tell you them pit greenhouses are great if you've got the space for it. If you don't, you want to use some of them straw bale, like that straw bale design or that uh, single angle design that I use facing the south on some of my other videos. But if, you, if you're digging this trench, let's say this is the trench you walk down, right? So this is looking directly down on it, and this is a trench that you walk down where your door is going to be right here, you know, swinging out like this, or whatever swinging. Well, all you'd have to do is go into the center of your greenhouse and cut you a notch out. Once you cut your notch out, you could lay your 35 gallon drum in your notch, fill it up with dirt around it to that level, cut your hole out, and then fill your bricks in here, cob around it, bring it up, and then put a put a sheet of metal on top of it and put the dirt because this would also allow you to have a big stack, you know, because then you'd, have, you'd just dig the hole out. And then the hole you dig would be the barrel. And then you put your sheet of sheet metal on top of it and close it all up. That way, as you burnt this in your greenhouse, you would be delivering the heat into the dirt inside the greenhouse itself. You would be, you, you'd be using the sides of the, the dirt, of the pockets you built, as the barrel so it would be directly heating and then dig so it would be in that and then dig your trench to put your exit line out uh, off of that uh, off of that pocket so you realize you could dig a trench greenhouse and then dig a pocket for a rocket stove and then put the dirt back around it and use the greenhouse the dirt in the greenhouse itself as the thermal mass of the rocket stove. And I don't mean having a bitch of it covering it up. I mean about having it right there as a pocket in a central location that would heat the earth around it first and then radiate and get it get bigger and heat the bigger spot. So okay guys, this is uh, some of, <laughs> just a few of, the design considerations for rocket stoves. Uh, I'm sure this isn't all of them, but uh, thanks for watching.